subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Allah forgive all of us. Amin. My brothers, the topic for today's Juma discussion is why was the Quran revealed? Allah Ta'ala Quran Najil Kursa Kano. I would just like to make one point clear that this question itself, why was the Quran revealed? A person can speak for hours together. A Juma Kudba, normally being 30 minutes, is not enough justice to do, is not enough justice for this question. Why the Quran was revealed, a person can spend hours upon hours discussing only on this question alone. But if we want to understand why was the Quran revealed, we first have to understand two very important points in Imani Mufassal. What is Imani Mufassal? Amantu billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rasulihi wal yawmil akiri wal qadri khayrihi wa sharrihi min Allah ta'ala wal ba'asi ba'd al maut. Amantu meaning I believe. Amantu billah. I believe in Allah. Wa malaikatihi. I believe in his angels. Wa kutubihi. I believe in his books. Wa rasulihi. I believe in his messengers. Wal yawmil akiri. I believe in the last day. Min Allah ta'ala. The, I believe in Qadr, Min Allah Ta'ala, that good and bad is given by Allah, and Wal Ba'asi Bad al Maut, and I believe in resurrection after death. These are known as the seven pillars of Iman. Number one is Amantu Billah, which means to believe in Allah. Number two is Wa Malaika, to believe in His messengers. Number three is Wa Qutubihi, to believe in His books. Number four is Rasulihi, to believe in Allah's messengers. Number five is Wal Yawmil Akhiri to believe in the last day. Number six is Wal Qadri Khairihi wa Sharrihi that good and bad Qadr is given by Min Allah Taala given by Allah and Wal Baasi Bad Al Maut and I believe in resurrection after death. Amongst these seven pillars of Iman, two of them are Wa Qutubihi, which means to believe in the books revealed by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and Wa Rasulihi to believe in the messengers of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. If we want to understand this question, why was the Quran revealed? We have to understand first Qutubihi and Rasulihi. Let us begin by first understanding Rasulihi. What does Islam have to say about the prophets sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran in Surah Fatir, chapter number 35, verse number 24, Wa immin ummatin illa kalafiha nazid. There has not been a nation except that a warner has walked amongst them in the past. Allah says in Surah Yunus, chapter number 10, verse number 47, Wa kulli ummatin rasul. To every nation we have sent a messenger. Allah repeats a similar message in Surah Nahl. Chapter number 16, verse number 36. Walakat ba'asna fi kulli ummati rasulan ani budullaha washtani buttagut. Allah says that we have sent a messenger to every nation telling the people to worship only Allah and avoid idolatry, avoid ta'gut. The Quran says that every nation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent a messenger. In the Holy Quran, there are 25 nabis, 25 prophets mentioned by name. Adam, Nu, Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, Suleiman, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Peace and mercy and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon them all. Now before discussing the messengers in deep, I would like to make one point clear and I want each and every single one of you to remember this in today's Juma Khutbah. Every Rasul is a Nabi, but every Nabi is not a Rasul. I will, I, will, I will say this one more time. I want everyone to remember this for today's discussion. Every Rasul is a Nabi, but every Nabi is not a Rasul. Let us all keep this in mind today. In the Quran, there are 25 prophets mentioned directly by name. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells Hazrat Muhammad in the Holy Quran. Allah says in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 164. Allah ta'ala says, We revealed to you the stories of some of the messengers, and some of them we did not. That means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed only 25 prophets and their history to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, but he did not mention every single Rasul in the Holy Quran. Now the question is, number one, Quran says that every nation had a Rasul. And number two, the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Hazrat Muhammad some of the stories of the messengers we have revealed to you and some of them we did not reveal to you. Then the question is, how many messengers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually send? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
There are three hadiths which give us the answer. It's mentioned in Mishkatul Masabi, volume number three, hadith number 5737, in Musnad Ahmad ibn Hanbal, volume number five, chapter number 256, hadith number 22342, as well as Sahih ibn Himban, volume number one, hadith number 361, a Sahabi, a companion, he comes to Allah's Messenger and says, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, come mil anbiya. How many prophets did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send? Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he replied, Kala miyatu alfin wa arba'u wa ishurna. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent 313 messengers on earth. And what did I mention a little while ago? Every Rasul is a Nabi, but every Nabi is not a Rasul. So, there were 124,000 Nabis sent on the face of the earth. Out of these 124,000 Nabis, 313 of them were Rasuls. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, He does not only tell us Muslims, He does not only tell us Muslims that He has sent a messenger to every nation. The Quran also goes on to say that a Muslim has to believe in all of the messengers which were sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are, and also tells Muslims not to make distinctions between the messengers. It's mentioned in the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 285. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La nufarriku bayna ahadim minhum. They, talking about the Muslims, do not make distinction between Allah's messengers. They, the Muslims, do not make distinction between Allah's messengers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us Muslims to tell the Jews and the Christians. It's mentioned in Surah Baqarah chapter number 2 verse number 136. Allah says, Kul, tell them, we believe in Allah and what has been revealed to us. And we believe in what has been revealed to Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac and Jacob and their tribes. And we believe in what has been revealed to Moses and Jesus and what has been revealed to all of the other prophets from the Lord. We make no distinction between them. And we are Muslims. The most important property of a Muslim is Kalima Tayyibah. Kalima Tayyibah is the most important property of a Muslim because a person's Iman is dependent upon his belief in Kalima Tayyibah. In Islam, we have six kalimas. The first is known as kalima ta'iba. The second is known as kalima shahadat. Third is known as kalima tawheed. Fourth is known as kalima tamjid. Fifth is known as kalima istighfar. And sixth is known as kalima rada kufr. Amongst these six kalimas, the most important are the first two kalimas, kalima ta'iba as well as kalima shahadat. Kalima ta'iba and kalima shahadat, they are bearing witness in la ilaha illallah that there is no one worthy of worship except Allah and Muhammad Rasulullah that Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the messenger of Allah Maulana Kutubuddin Khan Rahimahullah he has written a book by the name Mazahir Haq which is a commentary of the famous hadith book known as Mishkatul Masabi and in this book Hazrat Maulana Kutubuddin Khan he says that the kalima is the heart of Islam if a person does not have firm belief upon the kalima, his iman is not accepted and any act of ibadat which he may do is not accepted. In kalima tayyibah, we Muslims, we say Muhammadu Rasulullah, which means the Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah. When a person admits his belief in Muhammadu Rasulullah, he is also indirectly saying, I believe in all of the messengers sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has made it mandatory upon his followers to believe in all of the prophets which came before him. Now, we have to ask ourselves the question that why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send messengers in the first place? What was the intention behind sending many messengers? In the glorious Quran, there are two words which are used to describe the duty of a messenger. The first word is Mubashir and the second word is Munzir. Mubashir means a person who delivers good news and Munzir means a warner, someone who delivers warnings. 
And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 165, Rusulam mubashirina wa munzirina li Allah yakuna li nasi alallahi hujjatun ba'da rasul wa kana Allahu aziza nakima. Messengers we have sent, delivering good news and giving warnings so that the people will have no excuse in front of Allah after the coming of the messengers. Wa kana Allahu aziza nakima. Allah is all intelligent, all wise. Maulana Abul Hassan al Nadwi, Rahimahullah, he has written a very beautiful book by the name An Nabuwa. And in this book, Maulana Abul Hassan al Nadwi, Rahimahullah, he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent prophets, has sent messengers for the uplift of humanity. And then he goes on to say that the most important duty of these prophets was to teach their ummah, was to teach their people, La ilaha illallah. And this is also mentioned in the Holy Quran. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Anbiya, which means prophets, Anbiya means the prophets, in Surah Anbiya, chapter number 21, verse number 25, Allah says, We did not send a messenger except that it was told to him to teach the people La ilaha illallah. Now that we have a brief understanding of Rasulihi, let us now speak about the other part of Imani Mufassal, which is Kutubihi. To believe in the books revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Islam teaches that a Muslim should not only believe in the Holy Quran alone, but a Muslim should also believe in all of the previous scriptures, in all of the previous revelations which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Holy Quran, in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 4, Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِيكَ Those who believe, Allah tells Hazrat Muhammad, those who believe in what has been re revealed to you, O Muhammad, and believe in what has been revealed before you. We know to Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent two revelations. The first revelation revealed to Hazrat Muhammad is the glorious Quran. And we Muslims don't only follow the Holy Quran, we also follow the authentic sayings of the last and final messenger, which we call as the Hadith. This is the most famous book of Hadith. It's known as Sahih al-Bukhari. And the ulama have said about Sahih al-Bukhari, Asahul kutubi ba'da kitabillah. The most authentic book after the book of Allah. So, we Muslims believe that to Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Allah subhanahu wa taala has revealed number one the Quran and number two the Sunnah, which we find in the various books of Hadith. And those who believe in what has been revealed before you, before Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in the Quran there are four revelations mentioned directly by name: Torah, Zabur, Injil, and the Quran. Torah is the wahi, the revelation which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. Zabur is the wahi, the revelation, the book which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Hazrat Daud alayhi salam. Injil is the wahi, the revelation, the book which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed to Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, also known as Jesus, peace be upon him. And the Quran we know is the last and final wahi which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed to his messenger, Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the Quran, there are four revelations mentioned directly by name. But Allah also says in the Quran, Allah says in Surah Rad, chapter number 13, verse number 38, kulli ajlin kitab, and to every nation we have revealed a book. How many books did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kotu asmani kitab najil kursi? The ulama have said approximately 300. Tin show kitab guli Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala najil kursi. But a Muslim has to believe in all of the revelations revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if a Muslim does not believe in all of the revelations revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has committed kufr. And those people who make distinction between Allah's messengers as well as his books, Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verses number 150 and 151. And as for those who say, we believe in some of the messengers and some of them we do not believe and we wish to follow a path in between, Allah says about these people, Ula'ika humul kafiruna, haqqa. These are truly the disbelievers, haqqa, truly the disbelievers. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Allahumma rabb hazihi da'wati tamma wa salati al-qa'ima ati Muhammadin al-wasilat wal-fadila wa ba'ash maqam Mahmudin allazi wa'atta innaka la tuklifu al-mi'ad For those of you who just came in today's Juma discussion is why was the Quran revealed 
Now, many of our non-Muslim brothers and sisters, primarily the Christian brothers and sisters, they may ask us Muslims that if you Muslims believe in all of the revelations which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed, then why do you only follow the Quran? Why do you make amal only upon the Quran? Why don't you not follow the Injil and the Zabur and the Torah, which they call the present day Bible, like how we do? The reason is because all of the previous revelations, all of the previous scriptures, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed before the Quran, by the passing of time, those scriptures have started to be changed and they are not in the original form. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 75, Summa yuharrifun, that they have distorted it. Maulana Abdul Majid Dariyabadi, Rahimahullah, he has read a tafsir by the name Tafsiri Mahajidi. And in this tafsir, Maulana Abdul Majid Dariyabadi, Rahimahullah, he says that when the Quran says, Summa yuharrifun, that they have distorted it, it is talking about the Jews that the Jews have changed the Torah, the revelation which was revealed to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. This is why Allah says four verses later in Surah Baqarah chapter number 2 verse number 79 Woe to those who write the book with their own hands and then say this is from Allah just so that they can exchange it for a small price. Woe to those for what they have written, woe to those for what they earn. And Professor Richard Friedman, who is a professor of religious studies in the University of Oxford, he has written a book by the name, Who Wrote the Bible? And in this book, Professor Richard Friedman, being a Christian, he said that history is witness that the Bible has been changed. And that scripture which the Jews and the Christians read today, they are not in the original form. Imagine Richard Friedman being a Christian. He believes that the Bible is the word of God. Being a Christian, he still had to admit that the Bible by throughout history has been changed. And I would just like to make a quick disclaimer regarding the Bible. This is the Bible, which is the New International Version Bible, the Protestant Bible, which is the most famous Bible today. Many Muslims think that this Bible is the Injil, which has been revealed to Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. And the Christian missionaries, what they do, they go around giving Muslims copies of the Bible and titling it the Holy Injil. This is not the Injil which was revealed to Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. This Bible, it may contain some things from the original Injil which matches with the Holy Quran. We Muslims have no problem. Anything in the Bible which matches with the Quran, we Muslims have no problem accepting that part of the Bible to be true. Anything which goes against the Quran, we say that it cannot be the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And anything which does not contradict with the Quran, neither does it match with the Quran, neither does it go against the Quran, it is ambiguous. But I would like to make a disclaimer, this Bible is not the Injil which was revealed to Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. Now, there are many examples that we can give from the Bible which proves that it has been changed. I'll just mention one example. The Bible says in the Old Testament, the Bible is divided into two parts, the Old Testament and the New Testament. It's mentioned in the Old Testament, in the Bible, in the first book of Kings, chapter number 11, verses number 3 to 5. It says that Hazrat Sulaiman alayhi salam, he committed idol worship. The Bible says the Hazrat Sulaiman alayhi salam na'uzubillah committed idol worship. We Muslims cannot agree with this. The Quran although defends the honor of Hazrat Sulaiman alayhi salam. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah chapter number 2 verse 102. It was not Sulaiman alayhi salam who committed idol worship. It was the people in his community who committed idol worship. We can see over here that the Quran is defending the honor of Hazrat Sulaiman alayhi salam. Bible says Sulaiman alayhi salam committed idol worship. Quran says it was not Sulaiman alayhi salam. It was the people in his community who committed idol worship. We Muslims believe that all of the prophets, all of the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were masoom, they were sinless. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al-Imran chapter number 3 verse number 161 as well as Surah Anbiya chapter number 21 verses number 25 and 227 that all of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they were masoom, they were sinless. 
So because all of the prophets, all of the messengers were masoom, how is it possible the Hazrat Sulaiman could have done idol worship? Idol worship is a kobira guna. Kobira means major, guna means sin. Idol worship, murti puja, is a kobira guna. It's a major sin. Idol worship is shirk. Shirk means associating partners with Allah. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Nisa chapter number 4 verse number 48 as well as Surah Nisa chapter number 4 verse number 116 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive any sin which He pleases but the sin of shirk, the sin of associating partners with Him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never forgive and we Muslims believe that all of the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they spoke against shirk they spoke against anything which is worship other than Allah Allah says in the Quran in Surah Nahl, chapter number 16, verse number 36, وَلَكَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ رَسُولًا عَنِ عِبْدُ اللَّهَ وَشْتَنِ بُطَعْقُودِ That we have sent a messenger to every nation, telling the people to worship only Allah, only Allah, and to avoid idolatry, avoid ta'gut. So, this saying in the Bible, which says the Hazrat Sulaiman alayhi salam, na'uzu billah, committed idol worship, this cannot be the word of God. And Alhamdulillah, Summa Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised that He will protect the Holy Quran and that He will not allow anyone to change the Holy Quran. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al Hijr, chapter number 15, verse number 9, Inna nahanu nazal na zikra wa inna lahu la hafizun. We have revealed the Quran and we shall surely be its protector. We have revealed the Quran and we shall surely guard it from corruption. So, Alhamdulillah, Summa Alhamdulillah. The Quran, it defends the honor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's prophets, which is one of the reasons why it has also been revealed. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 48, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the Holy Quran as a guardian of the previous revelation, as a guardian of the previous scriptures. The Arabic word used is Muhaymin. Muhaymin means a guardian. The ulama have said that when the Quran says that it is a guardian of the previous scriptures, it means that the Holy Quran is the final judge. We cannot judge by the previous revelations because the previous revelations, they have gone through changes. They are not in the original form. And that is true. Why would we judge by a book which has been changed by the hands of man? We only judge by the Holy Quran because the Quran is the only book which has not been changed. Now, as I mentioned earlier, that many of our Christian brothers and sisters, they ask us, that why do you Muslims only follow the Bible? Uh, only follow the Quran. Why do you Muslim not follow the Bible if you believe in all of the kitabs which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed before? A simple, to, a simple easy to understand answer is because we Muslims, we believe that the Quran is the untampered word of God. And then they ask us a third question, a second question as well, that why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only promise to protect the Holy Quran? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make the same promise to protect the Torah, to protect the Injil, to protect the Zabur, to protect the Suhufi Ibrahim? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only promise to protect the Holy Quran? The reason is because all of the previous revelations which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not reveal those books for humanity to follow until Yawm al Qiyamah, until the Day of Judgment. And those books were not revealed for the whole of humanity. In the Quran, there are 25 prophets mentioned directly by name. 24 of these prophets are national prophets. What is the meaning of national prophets? National prophets means that these prophets only came for a specific group of people and the revelation which was revealed to them was only revealed for a specific time period. For example, the Quran says in Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 49. Hazrat Isa alayhi salam to was salam, he was sent as a messenger to the Bani Israel, to the children of Israel. Our Christian brothers and sisters, they say that Hazrat Isa alayhi salam to was salam, he died for the sins of humanity. But nowhere is this mentioned in the Bible. If you read the complete Bible, nowhere does Hazrat Isa alayhi salam to was salam himself say that I would die for the sins of humanity. In fact, Isa alayhi salam in the Bible, he says, it's mentioned in the New Testament, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 15, verse number 24. He says, I have not been sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That means that according to the Bible, Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, he only came for the Jews. He only came for the Bani Israel. But 
the Quran, when speaking about the last and final messenger Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, it does not say that he was only sent for the Muslims or the Arabs. Many people have a misconception that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was only a messenger, only a Rasul sent to the Muslims and for the Arabs. The Holy Quran contains more than 6,000 ayats, more than 6,000 signs. And there is not a single ayat, not a single sign in the Holy Quran which says the Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has been sent only for the Muslims and the Arabs. When the Quran speaks about Hazrat Muhammad, Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Anbiya, chapter number 21, verse number 107, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ That we have sent you not except as a mercy to the worlds, as a mercy to the creatures, as a mercy for the whole of humanity. Allah repeats a similar message in Surah Sabah, chapter number 34, verse number 28. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا كَافَةً لِلنَّاسِ بَشِيرًا وَنَزِيرًا وَلَكِنَّ أَكْسَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ And we have sent you, O Muhammad, as a universal messenger, giving glad tidings and warning the people against sin. But most of the people yet do not know. And Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa himself has also said in a hadith. It's mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari, volume number one, in the book of Salah, chapter number 56, hadith number 438. Our Prophet said, five things have been given to me which were not given to any Prophet which came before me. And number four, our Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him says, all of the Prophets which came before me, they were only sent for their people and their time, but I have been sent for the whole of humanity. And because Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has been sent as a messenger for the whole of humanity, the revelation, the book which was revealed to him, the Holy Quran, was not only revealed for a specific nation, it was revealed for the whole of humanity. It's mentioned in the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 185. Surah Ibrahim, chapter number 14, verse number 1. Surah Ibrahim, chapter number 14, verse number 52. Surah Azumur, chapter number 39, verse number 41. Surah Sad, chapter number 38, verse number 87. Surah Taqweer, chapter number 81, verse number 27. Surah Kalam chapter number 68 verse number 52 as well as Surah Yusuf chapter number 12 verse number 104 the glorious Quran says that it has been sent as a revelation for the whole of humanity and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Hazrat Muhammad it's mentioned in Surah Furqan chapter number 25 verse number 1 Allah begins Surah Furqan by saying Tabarik allazi nazzala furqana ala abdihi liyakuna lil alameen nazid blessed is, is he blessed is he who has revealed the Furqan. One of the names of the Quran is Al-Furqan. Blessed is he who has revealed the Al-Furqan to his servant, Hazrat Muhammad, so that he can be a warner for all of the worlds, so that he can be a warner for the whole of humanity. And because Prophet Muhammad وسلم, has been sent as a messenger for the whole of humanity, he is the last and final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Azab, chapter number 33, verse number 40, مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحَدٍ مِّن رِجَالِكُمْ وَلَاكِ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ وَقَاتَمُ النَّبِيِّينَ وَقَانَ اللَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ alima. Muhammad peace be upon him, is not the father of any of you men, but he is the messenger of Allah. He is the Qatamun Nabiyin, the seal of all of the prophets. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most intelligent, full of knowledge. In this verse of the Holy Quran, Surah Azab, chapter number 33, verse number 40, Allah ta'ala describes Hazrat Muhammad as Qatamun Nabiyin. Qatam means seal, which means that he is the seal of the prophets. In the Warsh Kira'at of the Quran, it's not Qatimun Nabiyin, it's Qatimun Nabiyin. Qatim meaning seal, Qatim means final. So he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not only is he Qatimun Nabiyin, the seal of the prophets, he is also Qatimun Nabiyin, the final prophet. And our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has said in the Hadith, La Nabiya Ba'di, there is no prophet to come after me. And what do we Muslims say in Kalima Tamjid, the fourth Kalima? Muhammadur Rasulullah, Imamul Mursalina Khatamun Nabiyin. That Hazrat Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. He is the Imamul Mursalin, the Imam of the Messengers, and Khatamun Nabiyin. He is the seal of the Prophets. After Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, there will be no other Prophet to come. And because he has been sent as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's last and final messenger, the revelation, the book which was revealed to him, is the last and final revelation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed for humanity. After the Quran, there will be no other new revelation to come. And now, 
the Holy Quran, one of the other reasons why it has been revealed was to perfect this idea which we call as religion. Many people have a misconception that Islam is a new religion which started 1400 years ago. And they say that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a founder of this religion, Islam. The reality is, Islam was there since the time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created Hazrat Adam alayhi salam. All of the prophets which came before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Hazrat Muhammad said in Sahih al-Bukhari, volume number 4, in the book of Am Kitab al-Anbiya, the book of prophets, hadith number 3443, our prophet said, all of the prophets, they are brothers of one another. Their mothers are different, but their religion is one, Dinul Wahid. All of the prophets which came before Hazrat Muhammad, they preached nothing but Islam. Some people, they say, the Hazrat Isa salam, he was the founder of Christianity. And the Jews, they say, the Hazrat Musa salam, was the founder of Judaism. The word Judaism and Christianity does not even exist in the Bible. The Jews, they say the Hazrat Musa salam, is the teacher of Judaism. The Christians, they say the Hazrat Isa salam, he was the founder of Christianity. But the words Judaism and Christianity doesn't exist in the Bible. The only scripture in the whole world in which the name of the religion is mentioned directly is the Holy Quran. The Holy Quran is the only religious scripture on the face of the earth in which the prophet to whom it was revealed, it was also told him directly what is the name of this religion. The Quran says in Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 19, Inna in the Allah al Islam. The religion in the sight of Allah is Islam. Even Hinduism. Swami Vivekananda, who is a very great scholar of Hinduism, he said that Hinduism is a misnomer and that the right name for Hinduism is. Vedic Dharam, which means the religion of the Vedas. Swami Sivanananda, who is also another great scholar of Hinduism, he says that the name of the Hindu religion should be named Sanatan Dharma. But if you read the scriptures of Hinduism, the Vedas, the Upanishads, the Puranas, the Ramayan, the Mahabharata, the Bhagavad Gita, these words, Sanatan Dharma, as well as Vedic Dharma, is nowhere to be found in the Hindu scriptures. The only scripture on the face of the earth in which the name of the religion is mentioned directly is the Holy Quran. In the Dina in the Lahil Islam, the religion in the sight of Allah is Islam. All of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their religion was Islam. During the time of the prophets, the religion was Islam, but the Shariat was different. And the Shariat was dependent on the Rasul of that time and what revelation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed to him. For example, Musa, Musa salam, his religion was Islam. But during the time of Hazrat Musa salam, the Shariat was dependent on the Torah, the revelation which was revealed to Hazrat Musa salam. And under the Torah, the Shariat says you should pray three times a day. But the last and final kalima, the last and final Shariat which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed for the whole of humanity is Shariat Muhammadiyah. And in Shariat Muhammadiyah, the Shariat which is dependent on the Quran, we Muslims now pray five times a day. So Islam was there. And Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the sending of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He has perfected Islam as well as perfected the final Shariat for humanity. It's mentioned in the Quran. Allah tells Hazrat Muhammad in the Quran. In Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 3. Al yawma akmaltu lakum dinukum. On this day, I have chosen for you your religion, Islam. Wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati. And I have bestowed my favor upon you. Wa raditu lakum al Islam adina. And I have perfected Islam for you as your religion. And 600 years before this revelation of the Quran, Surah Maida chapter 5 verse number 3 was revealed, Hazrat Isa wasalam, he made a prophecy regarding the coming of the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. It's mentioned in the Bible, in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verses number 12 to 14. Hazrat Isa salam, in the Bible says, I have many things to say unto you, but you will not be able to understand them now. But when he, the spirit of truth, shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All shall he hear, shall he speak. He shall show you things to come. He shall glorify me. Brother Shamon, who is this person Hazrat Isa is talking about? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Isa says, He shall guide you on the all truth. Who is the only man 
who has claimed to come with all truth for the whole of humanity. It's no one but Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It says that he shall not speak of himself or shall he shall he speak. The Quran says in Surah Najm, chapter number 53, verses number 3 and 4, Hazrat Muhammad does not speak on his own desires. He only speaks on what has been revealed to him. Isa salam says that this person, he will shall glorify me. Who is the only man who has glorified Hazrat Isa salam? It is Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So all of the prophets which came before Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, their religion was Islam and primarily Hazrat Isa salam prophesied the coming of the last and final messenger Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Now, if the Quran is claiming that it came to perfect what we call religion, that, that also means that the Quran is a perfect book. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 2, Zalika al kitabu la rayba fihi. This is the only book in which there is no doubt. Hudallil mutakeen, as a guidance for the righteous, as a guidance for the pious. And those people who doubt that the Quran has any mis those people who feel that the Quran has any mistakes and they feel that the Quran actually does have doubts, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala challenges these people. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Nisa chapter number 4, verse number 82, Do they not consider that the Quran to be with care? Had this Quran been from anyone besides Allah, there has been many discrepancies in it. There would have been many contradictions, many mistakes, many discrepancies. Alhamdulillah, there is not a single mistake in the Holy Quran. And I challenge anyone, let him be the biggest pundit of the world to show me a single mistake in the Holy Quran. I guarantee you, if you were to check those references with the complete context, the Quran would not contain a single mistake. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala challenges the whole of humanity. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 88, Kul, tell them, if all of the mankind and all of the jinn kind were to come together as helpers to try to produce a book like this Quran, they would never be able to do it without the permission of Allah.